Hey, comedy fans, welcome to another edition of the Comedy at the Carlson cast. I'm your host, my name is Vinny, and joining me in studio, we welcome back Tammy Pescatelli. Today's episode is brought to you by Comedy at the Carlson, the only place you could see Tammy this weekend. For information or to grab your tickets, visit carlsoncomedy.com. Remember, at Comedy at the Carlson, there's always something funny going on. Now, let's get started. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Comedy at the Carlson cast. My name is Vinny. I'm your host. And joining me in studio, she's a comedian. She's an actress. She's a reality TV star. And she's your headliner for four more shows here at the Carlson this weekend. Welcome back, Tammy. Thanks. I uh, I think I'm tired, really. That's a the beautiful intro. And I, I feel like I'm none of those things except comedian, I think. Really? Yeah. I don't act enough, I feel like, to be considered an actress. But I'm trying trying to do a little bit more small parts. I just had an audition this week, this big audition for this Vince Vaughn movie where I felt like I crushed it. It was seven pages of dialogue. And then I got an email back from my agent. They're like, well, they cast someone else in that part, but they wanted to know if you would play the cousin. And here, could you read the lines? And there were two lines. It was like, I'm sorry for your loss, Joey. She was a good woman. And here's some stuffed shells with some fresh regard for later. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, so okay, so... Okay. Right. And it's I'm the cousin. I don't even have a name, just cousin. And and I go, I have to audition for two of them? Like <laughs> just two lines. You saw seven pages of dialogue. Just let me what to do you be, think? To be fair, every Italian has a cousin named Tammy. Maybe. I don't know if they do. That's not a real Italian name. I mean my I feel like I have three. Do you really? I don't know. It, well, the tamarisk is the real name, which is a Sicilian spice, and that's where it's from. But that, the, that's your full name, tamarisk. Yeah, T A M E R I S K. Yeah. I've always wondered, like, what Tammy was short for. Well, some it's Tamara. Okay. Yeah, uh, Tamar for some people, but mine is tamarisk. Yeah, it's Sicilian. It's a spice that they don't even have over here. I don't think it's a risky choice for your parents. Yeah, Tamar, they knew Tamar. right away. They knew right. I was a Spice Girl. That's actually funny. The original Spice Girl, Tammy yeah, Pascatelli. Man, that's it. So, Tammy, welcome back to Rochester. You still have Thank family you. here, don't you? I do. My brother lives here, his wife, her whole family, my niece and nephew. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, I have good news for you. Tell me. Congratulations. Uh-oh. We're going to let you perform inside this time. It's so exciting. Uh, it's Aren't so exciting. Great? I mean, listen, mind blown. But at least things were still continuing here. Yeah, let's a lot backtrack of, for a second. Yeah. For those who are listening who don't know this, during the pandemic, after the shutdown, New June of State, 2020, June of 2020, everything was still shut down, but you were allowed to do outdoor performances. So that's right. Mark, Jake, and a couple other guys here at Comedy the Carl said, we all went and built a big stage outside, and Tammy was the first comedian we called to yeah, come out it here and Yeah, it was great. Everybody. We had a really good time. Um, we definitely had distance. It was kind of cool because the mics went over the radio that's uh i don't know what that noise is but that was that's... my computer for some reason oh well i thought it was like the flux capacitor to go back to 2020 so Might we can talk be. about it <laughs> um but it was it was really it was a unique experience um i also got in trouble again someone's always trying to cancel me but <laughs> i said i was humiliated and mortified but it wasn't about you guys or doing it here. It was just about the whole way that comedy was and how life had dwindled down to that whole thing. And people took it the wrong way. And I don't need any spokesperson. Yeah. I think that that stage in particular was a very interesting time because like the thing that people don't understand about stand, stand up is you have to present it properly. Stand up has to be presented in a way yes. like almost like a movie in the movie theater where there's, a dark room. I talk about that now in my acts because, look, we had to do what we had to do to keep it alive. A lot of people did Zoom shows, and I get that, and I, I respect it. I'm not crapping on any of it. But what I am saying is that it also the 30-second clips that people are now going famous, going viral on 30 seconds, one joke, two jokes, that's not good. They're also being canceled, conversely, from that. And you need to come are sit in the canceled? dark room. Yeah. And, and people really do people. I hate when people say that people don't get canceled. Cause when I got canceled, I lost everything, agent, manager, gigs, everything. 
in the in the scope of a week. So people what got do you get canceled, canceled. Tammy? Uh, people were lifting jokes. A certain person was lifting jokes and um, several jokes, not just mine, lots of other people's. I'm not the arbiter of comedy, but uh-huh. these are my tools. And if I go to tell that joke after a wildly popular comedian is telling that joke, then, you know, I can't tell you about the time I actually went to the baseball game with my grandfather and a bird crapped on him because you did it in right. your in your TV show. That really happened to me when I was 10. That's not fair. So it was that kind of stuff, but it's always, you know, who's bigger and more popular at the time. So you called out the bigger kid on the playground. Yeah, me and, and uh, several you- people did, but it all dwindled down. It went from like three people call the person out. And the only reason I don't say their name is it's very pop. You can look it up. It's Google it everywhere. But they threatened well, here me. Comes the they Google. had uh, Bill Cosby's lawyers. He threatened me. It was all kinds of stuff. I they just went crazy. Because Bill Cosby's lawyers are apparently phenomenal. I know. Listen, Those they sent the a thing in. Listen, trust me. They did a cease and desist. It was all kinds. They got everybody. Lena Dunham hated me. All kinds of people hated me from it because they just, you know, try to tell me that I don't support women. And I'm like, how do you think all these young female comics, we all work hard. Oh, I know who you are. Yeah. So it was just a big. And I actually was telling the truth. Later, I was kind of exonerated because hours and hours of videos of exactly what I was saying well, listen, came out. I will go ahead and say it. You don't have to go ahead and say it. But, well, they'll come sue you. I'm well, telling that's you. That's fine. The person that we're discussing. Uh, You'll also get audited because I've been audited seven times because the relatives in charge of audits at the IRS. I'm telling you not what? to do it. I'm telling you not to do it. I'm telling you as. as all you got to do is Google it. It's all facts. I may have voted for her uncle once or twice. Sure. Uh, yeah. But if you if you say anything about it, you're going to get audited. Okay. Trust me. So there was video of this person. And I, I hate that. I'm. Gonna but it didn't come out. This. But for me, it didn't come out till after. every time we kept trying to put it up, Viacom would pull it down. Comedy Central. Every time people would put up comparison, contrast clips, we because no one was savvy in 2016 except for experts at YouTube and stuff like that. It's very difficult to catch a comedy thief uh, until they get really big and they have lots of footage out there. Yeah. And we would try to put up a joke here or there. And even during that week, I mean, it literally went from a discussion on, on Twitter on Sunday night to and which was naive of me to because I did go in the hardest and I you know so I did said you get you you had a conversation with other comics and you got worked up. on Twitter yeah and okay. I got worked up I said we want you to do well just do it with your own material and then I said uh 2016 prior to me too I said at least Cosby knocks his victims out before he raped them okay it was a joke. Comics do jokes. I don't even do rape jokes. A lot of people do. Yeah. I never judge anybody. But I was trying to make light of it to go, hey, we love you. It's not that serious. Let's just knock it off. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure about people are going to try to cancel me now. You can't take anything. Nobody's going to cancel me. Um, then it went from three comics accused, went down to by Wednesday, it was just me. And how now, I, I had. These other two like recanted. No, this person. No, I don't know what happened because dropped out. They just it all. You know who hid, who had this, who had big, and um, you know, the person had uh PR that was Madonna's publicist, U2's publicist. I'm just me sitting in Meadville, Pennsylvania, with my kid. All I have oh, is no. is 15 years worth of work at that point. You know what I mean? That's all I have to show. And then it was, it became like this chick fight. Like it, like I was jealous. I, I'm not jealous because I'm a comic first more than I'm a woman first. Yeah. I didn't, jealousy is not in my wheelhouse because if I see a woman do well in com, and this is still my mentality. First of all, I think of us all as comics. Yeah. And then especially if I see a woman do well, then I know that they're opening the door for maybe me because if they do well, they'll come and find me. I had given this person an opportunity to open for me for two weeks when I my career was super hot. Mm-hmm. So that's where that material was from that time period. It was just a nutso thing where we had the same agent. The agency dropped me. My manager dropped me. But good friends rushed to help me. Big name people that I didn't even know knew my name supported me. Called I got phone calls from people you would die if I told you. Well, 
since you know? then, a lot of videos have come out. And now Friday, out, the you Friday, are right here. Well, the Friday. So for the whole week, I was persona non grata. No one wanted to talk to me. I called my buddy Steve Renazizi oh, to no. ask him how he dealt with the chaos because he's <laughs> Steve famously is the very Lied funny comic. 9, 9, being at 9 11. Yeah, I had to call him and go, How am I going to navigate this? But I was just telling the truth. Yeah. And so thank God those videos came out and kind of exonerated me. But when I was interviewed and I said, I'm sorry I got involved. Their publicity spun it to you Pescatelli apologize. apologizes. That's unfair. That's just how life goes, man. So you it learn is how life goes. But when your management gets involved, when your uh, you know your publicist, all these people are dropping you, and it's affecting your business. Because I'm not making the money. Because somebody took jokes from you and used them to ascend higher. That's a real kick in the nards. I'm sorry to use that kind of language. It's but just a weird it's a dumb word. But. No, no, but it is, it was a, just a weird, weird. But then you know that happened to Rogan too. I was there the night the whole Mencia thing. His agency dropped him. Mitzi banned. I'm no Rogan. I'm not saying I'm Rogan. I'm just saying oh, that, no, that like know. sometimes when you're in the midst of it, it doesn't always. And then ultimately, a comic is a comic is a comic. I never really got cast in big things. I never had deals or. All I ever had were my words. For my career has just been me putting a certain number of jokes together in order to have a special or something like that. I mean, I was always I'm I I'll never forget I had a Netflix special and I was on there with a bunch of women, which was great to see like four women, but I was the only one who had clothes on. <laughs> like all the other chicks were like naked on their album cover and I'm sitting like a big dummy in a in a bumper car in a yeah. carnival going hey, hey so it's i'm a pop-up vcr you know what i mean like i'm i'm a ahead okay. of my time but i don't you know very larry david life without the money or the respect i think you have the <laughs> respect i think you have the respect tammy i think you know that i think that uh you're you're a revered uh, comedian in many, many circles. Oh, Vinny, I think, I think you, know you fell and hit your head on your way in, but that's very kind I of did. you. I have a giant uh, bandage on the back. I like to surround stencil. myself with people. Um, you know what, though? I don't... I grew up... I grew up with a crazy family with boys. That When I got in this industry, I just didn't... That's not... I just want to be respected and then get paid what I, I feel like I'm worth. Well, don't you, know you what think I mean? that maybe your perspective is a little bit different? Because, like, you don't live in the city. You're not living in LA. You're 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 in Pennsylvania. I left there. That's right. I left. So like, if you were there, I think you would see that people are very much respect you. Tammy. I think it, I would have a. That's very kind. I think I would have maybe a better career if I would have stayed in LA because I would have been around when all my friends had their podcasts and I would have probably been a regular guest on all of those. And I think it really would have changed it. But. I also only have one kid like he's only going to have one mom. And I knew that I was going to have to be on the road unless I got a sitcom or unless I had gotten something. Maybe I should have started a podcast, but I felt like I didn't have anything to say sure. that was anything greater than anybody else's right. thing. You know, well, everybody else has a podcast, too. So you know, <laughs> that yeah. evens out. Yeah, I finally I mean, I tried. I did a little bit here and there, but I could never stick with it long enough. You know, now I feel like. um I started one and it's not out yet. It's going to come out this summer and really? it's going to be limited. My best friend's a cop and she started, she retired. She started being a police officer when I became a comic. So both of us in these male dominated fields, two separate walks, two separate walk. She's way funnier than I've ever been ever, ever beautiful. Amazing. Um, and I used to have to go on ride alongs with her just to like hang out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, with just crazy stuff we'd see. And we now get together and we talk about um, crime uh, and comedy right now. we got 10 episodes. It's fun. Because I had to stay in a condo early in my career with a guy that turned out to be the most prolific serial rapist. Vince Champ. That's right. And I was interrogated by the FBI. What? Because they thought he was my boyfriend. Okay. For those of you who don't know, folks, Vince Champ was a comedian who played who did a lot of national TV spots. Not only a lot, of, he was the he was winner of Star Search. He won $100,000 in the late 90s. I didn't know he won 90s. Star Search. Yes, they thought, and you had to be clean. Ed McMahon handed him his check. He was network television, okay? 
and, and he played what, tons of colleges. And what, what would happen is, is that comedy condos is where we would stay, which were basically apartments. There were, for lack of a better term, like a hostel, like a flop house. And comedy was usually Tuesday through Sunday at that time. So Mondays, they were always open. For some reason, comics were booked in colleges on a lot of Mondays. So if I was staying, I'm from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing a show in Des Moines, which is how I would go to Omaha, Nebraska early if I was playing Omaha or vice versa right. and stay in that condo an extra day, anybody would show up. That's kind of was our bonding time. There could be 20 people in the condo. It could be just you. Sometimes they had keys to it. Sometimes people just showed up. I don't know. Maybe they were legitimate. Mm -hmm. You know, they had legitimate asks. Sometimes they just showed up to try to stay. Right. Sure. I'm staying in a condo in Omaha, Nebraska on my way. Cause I just played Omaha and I'm going to go down to Kansas city. Mm -hmm. Um, a guy walks in. It's Vince Champ. Um, and I think I knew he was coming. Um, I'm leaving for the gym. He's coming in with his bags. He says he's got a show that night. I'd never met him before. It's pretty dismissive of me. But I wasn't thrown off by it because I'm a, a young chick in comedy. In and everybody's, well, and yeah. there are not a lot of women in comedy out there back then. Right? right? Maybe 20 of us. And I'm young. And I'm not saying I'm hot or anything, but immediately I was always dismissed. I was always dismissed because I just didn't feel, and maybe I wasn't funny, but whatever. So I say, I'm going to the gym. He goes, I'm taking a nap. I come back a little bit later. I see him. I'm going to the movies. He's going to his show. That's it. That's the extent of our exchange, right? Okay. I come home. I go to bed. I get up early the next morning to drive. Mm -hmm. I never see him. A couple of weeks later, I'm on stage. The guy, uh, the owner of the club comes to me and goes, there's two FBI agents here for you. I'm like, I think they're messing with me because Sopranos are on. I'm like, you know, whatever. Hey, hey, Goomba. Da, da, da. And then, uh, hey, what happened? To I'm us? fixing get... something. Don't worry oh. about it. I'm listening to you. I'm no, it's okay. Something. Um, they they want to talk to me about Vince because I had also stayed with them another time. And they were like, your boyfriend is a rapist. And is I'm my like. My boyfriend? <laughs> I have a boyfriend back in Cleveland who I feel is sketchy, but I'm not home enough to know. I just felt I was started crying. I'm like, I thought he was just cheating on me. I didn't know he was a rapist. Oh, no. They're talking about Vince. I'm it was like a really bad threes company sketch in a over crime. Which the, rapist is that first? Yeah, I'm like, right. <laughs> the night going? that we stayed together, and we didn't stay together, but that I was in the condo with him. In Omaha, he actually raped a woman in Lincoln, Nebraska. And so for 10 years of my career or 10 years of my life, I had this horrible, just, I guess you would call it guilt because I felt like this lady saved my life because if he would have come back to the condo without completing that, I mean, he was a violent rapist with knives and everything else. Yeah. Here I am sleeping next to him. Like, who knew that that's what was happening, right? And I feel like she saved my life because I felt like I would have to, he would have had to take me out. I could identify him. I knew it was him, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Well, years later, my my friend retires, you know, just last year, she retires. And we start talking about this stuff. And we're like, let's put it up because there's been a lot of comics who have podcasts. But um, that's really the basis of it, of the first episode. Side note, though, I got to talk to the woman mm -hmm. because she did a, she came out with her name and everything. And it was like 20 years later and she's no longer a victim and she owns it. Yeah. And I got to thank her for saving me. Like, I, you know, that's rare that that happened and kind of. Did you say thanks for taking the bullet? Like, I don't know what she In a weird way. I, yeah. I, well, I, I kind of said, you know, I know I can't even fathom yeah what you went through and i i, I don't want to make it about me but i want you to know what you did for me yeah like you have to know that i was sharing a space with him you probably saved my life every analyst tells me that that he couldn't have controlled himself and it's not about me or anything else, but like if that wouldn't have been excised, he would have carried that evil well, into the situation. Not too long ago, uh, last fall, I read a whole bunch of stuff about that guy and what was going on with that. And I'm not going to 
get into the details of something so horrific, but he got everything he deserved and he's going to be in jail for, I think, life, isn't he? Does he have yeah, life? he went on to be charged. It was really one of the first cases. It was really cool that DNA evidence really yeah. got introduced, that all of the the states got together and he got charged in Iowa. He got charged in um Nebraska. And so they're not concurrent. Nowadays, a rapist would get concurrent sentences. Sure. One ends and then the other one starts. And it's crazy. So, And then there was a lot of comedy, like literally going back to like Fatty Arbuckle all the way to Phil Hartman. Like there's all kinds. So are you we focusing just, on crime in comedy? Or yeah. Just right now we just that's where we did. We did 10 episodes. If it works, it's Tammy, great. That's a brilliant idea. Thanks. If it works, it's great. If you know, I said, I don't know if we have 10 more in it. Like there's a guy, Jimmy Savile, who was a comic. <laughs> Do you heard that story oh, no, in no. England? That was like this. He Jimmy Savile was a DJ top of the pops. He was uh, big on the BBC. There's a whole he became Netflix, a yeah, Netflix documentary. He became a, a, a knight in the Royal service. He sir, was Sir Jimmy Savile. They never found out he raped and, and molested, molested, let's say molested. More than 500 people till after his death, they found all this stuff out. So and there's all was, these things. He he raised a ton of money. That was a show. He raised a ton of money for charity and he was hiding in plain sight. It's pretty it's, horrendous. Yeah. So there are all these stories. There was a young girl out of uh, Australia who was an open micer. Lots of promise. Really funny. On her way home from an open mic, she was raped and murdered. Eurydice Dixon. Her name deserves to be her said. That must have been terrible. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> it's joke. actually really funny, but it was, she, I think she would appreciate that joke. She had a really great sense of humor. Um, when but, did that happen? What year was that? I think it was 2018. That's so I, we're starting with that. If there's more in comedy, we'll do that. If it's pop, if if people like it, we'll end up doing more. I wanted to get those 10 episodes out. So what's the name of this? So I can keep the cop out, or... and the comedian, a true friendship crime podcast, a true friendship. crime podcast. Okay. Cause it's about I our, like it all. I she like tells it all. all the details that are sometimes horrible to say that like people go, you should take those details out. And I'm like, no, I'm keeping them in because those are what really happened. You know, I'm proud of you. You yeah. should, because you know, the human the human ability to walk past atrocity or gloss over atrocity without really considering what it is and what's really happening is uh, very common. Yeah. We don't think about how terrible these things are. Um, we just hear murder here, murder there, this, that, the other, and uh, it right over our heads. But when you take the time, yeah. you're actually honoring the people and respect being respectful of what happened. And you know what? If you can make people laugh and entertain while you do it, while educating people about stuff that's out there, I'm 100% for it. And we said it, like, right up. Like, there are people, I know for sure. I already told her, my friend's name is Laura. I'm like, listen, people are going to come at us. Nothing's funny about, yeah, because, but we're not making fun of the, the crime. Well, we're, we're, when a lot of the stuff that we're joking about uh -huh. is between she and I. When you stumble over a word or whatever, like, if there's funny to be had, it's at the top, at the bottom with each other it's our camaraderie but we got to talk i'm an expert in comedy she's an expert in crime why shouldn't we talk about it right and it's per perfect for us to hang out so if it works we'll cover comedy for as long as we can and then maybe i said listen maybe we go to sports grew up with the daughter of a professional football player we'll go to sports we'll go to entertainment and but we'll deal with the crime and all yeah. of it throughout if it works i think it i think you'll do pretty well with that that's a very interesting uh topic i mean it's an interesting take it's just yeah thank you i hope i mean well that's what i like because you know so many people think that they could turn on microphones and just have like a pal around podcast me and my friend we haven't talked in 20 years and our podcast is us catching up i don't care it's a topic. That's, that's my biggest problem is I never felt like there was anything worth talking about. So I didn't believe in it as much. I tried a, quite a few try, you know, once by myself, I did an ultra mini, like three minutes, really, basically, I guess I was doing Instagram before it was like the, the you know, like a, sure. a story. Um, I tried to do some of this stuff before I just didn't, it didn't interest me. So I could, and I come from radio background. Yep. So like I, wanted things to be perfect and now i'm a little bit looser with things like that but this i have to be we have to be more specific mm -hmm. because we have to get the details correct and what, what's interesting about it with podcasting let's just say is that 
the the whole world of podcasting has been split up into a bunch of genres. Yeah. So it's like your pal around podcast or your friend podcast, what they just slap them all into comedy. Yeah. They just every comedian that has one of these podcasts slaps it all into comedy. So there's like literally millions of stand up comedy or podcasts under labeled under comedy on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. Like the comedy, the Carlson cast, for those of you folks who are watching live, we are under comedy interviews. Love it. That's what we do. What would I be under? True crime. That's what you put instead I, of comedy. I slap that under true crime, 100%. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of true crime shows too, but what you have to do is hope that the, uh, the different take on it and, you know, the fact that you're an established comedian who's been performing and has specials on Netflix and has done amazing things in your career should give you a little bit of a bump. Well, thanks. They're now on Prime because I want my demographic to also have free shipping. Um, I moved them <laughs> over, but well, okay, forgive me. Yeah, well, no, Prime. Netflix made it clear that uh, I'm not their market anymore. I have this new special that I'm ready, like I'm ready to shoot it for some. I'm actually probably just going to put it up on YouTube. Now, um, your last special was 2020, right? Yeah. Oh, what a horrible! Like I'm telling you that the my book that I'm writing is called Death by Paper Cuts. Because it's like I'm oh, literally good. right. Like it's 2020 prior to March. I was at the Today Show on March 13th. OK, because I was promoting. I had my hour special coming out. I was part of a Showtime special. I was the host of Stand Up Nashville Live from Zanies mm -hmm. on Circle TV. I had Blue Bloods. I had, was the lead in a movie that was coming out on Amazon. I had all this stuff. And then the world shut down and it just kind of went. <clears throat> You know what I mean? Because it was going to be one of those years that all that promotion would have carried me for a couple of years. So I feel like a lot of people felt the sting of uh, careers yeah. stalling. If my special would have come out on Netflix, though, I think it would have been a game changer. Sure. But the special came out on. I said, I'm the pop up VCR. I'm always on whatever. I was on Netflix before everybody had Netflix. Yeah, I released my you know? special on HD DVD <laughs> and uh, no one has ever seen it. It's terrible. That's it. I'm selling DVDs after my show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's hysterical. So, Tammy, you are doing four more shows here at Comedy at the Carlson this weekend. You get your tickets now at carlsoncomedy.com. Don't miss out. There are, like I said, four left. Yeah, four. Now, let's That's talk about stand-up for a little bit yeah. because – there, there's so many interesting things about your takes. And one of the things that we talked about the last time you were here is how, you know, when you had your son, you yeah. decided that the good move for you, because you wanted to be a good mother and not have your kid in the green room with comics, you know, putting cigarette well, ashes Well, not that that's them. bad, right? Oh, well, sure. cigarette ashes are bad. Because people like, you know, I just, I knew that I had to be at an airport. That my, that's where my my son did come with me a lot when it was sure. comfortable in it. But yeah, I needed him. I needed to have people truly who were going to help my husband or like they had to know how crazy I was to watch him. Yeah. Like you can't hire people that are going to you see the nannies. You see nannies. You know how you could tell the difference between a nanny and a parent at the crosswalk. The nanny has the stroller halfway in the street at the crosswalk. Never thought of this. I've never thought of this. That's the nanny. Because they're not thinking. They're on their phone at the crosswalk and the kids in the stroller. A parent will think, what if the car turns the curb and comes up and hits the stroller? And they're and thinking everybody screws up at work. Yeah. <laughs> the nanny, it's just their job. What, are they going to get a write-up from HR? They're not thinking about it at all. Right. And so you relocated to you know give your son much more of like a normal life than being a, a part of the business. Yeah. Now, um, nothing can replace family, family. You get one, you know, you have your, your son, you have your, your kids, you have your priorities, but how hard was it to work back into the stand up world? Like, were you working during that Like, time? yeah, I never stopped. I worked my entire pregnancy. I was lucky. My husband was able to come out feature for me. He's, you know, he was a regular at the comedy store too. He's yeah. more of a comedic actor and everything else, but has a very funny, uh, stand up set. Um, what's performing he, pregnant like? Well, that was crazy um, because uh, <laughs> because I showed up at this one club. That's why I don't need anybody to speak for me because I'll speak for myself. Mike I showed up at this yours. one club and the guy said to me, they no longer own this club, okay? But it was called Juniors in Erie. Oh, I know Juniors. Right. Uh, before. Yeah, burn the guy, that place down back in the day. I remember. Junior is a nice guy. He took it over. He was the silent partner. And now it's... Um, uh, Keller's magic and comedy. Okay. Yep. But before there was this 
this weird couple that owned it. Okay. And I thought that they were cool and I thought that they were my friends. Um, I show up, I'm seven months pregnant and the guy goes, Hey, no one told me you were pregnant. Not like in a nice way, like, Hey, congratulations. I go, what? He goes, I go, what do you, yeah, what do you mean? No one told me. He goes, I don't know. I don't, you don't think it'll be distracting for people like that you're pregnant up there. And I go, uh, didn't you have Ralphie May last week? Yeah, he Zing. even right now, I'm still 120, 220 less than Ralphie. What does that have to do? Even now. Oh, no. God bless Ralphie. I love Ralphie. I called him. But that was also the club that I went to. I, I went to Gary Goldman and I was supposed to have lunch, right? Okay. And because it was close by my house at the time. We had planned to have lunch on a Thursday. He got a call. This is years ago. He got a call to go open for Louie. Okay. okay. And, and again, years ago, Louis the hottest thing. Louis C.K. <laughs> okay. It was Louis was the hottest thing. Oh, sweet Louis Anderson. God rest his soul. Um, and uh he calls me back a couple hours later, and I'm finally off. And uh, and I don't want to work this club, but they have the new no, it's still those idiots. Gary calls and goes, uh, hey. I'm got to go back for, I want to bring Ryan Hamilton in, but they don't know him. Now, how dumb are they that yep. they didn't know Ryan Hamilton at that time is young, but he's coming up. He, Ryan, everybody in the industry knows about Ryan One Hamilton. The gr- they were, they Ryan. were lucky. They would have been lucky to have Ryan Hamilton. He's coming over. They don't know. They said, if you'll cover for me, they'll let me off of the show tomorrow. Cause he gets a call like literally on Thursday to go to Madison square garden to open for Louis. I said, uh, I'll do it, uh, but I can't do the late show Saturday. And uh, he's like, okay. And then they call me back and go, well, we can't pay you your quote. I go, I don't, just let him go. I'll cover it, right? Okay. Now, these are also people who used to pull, you fill out that little card that used to give you free tickets. They would also pull the card. And if they pulled your name, you'd be the host next week. That was the MC for the show because they wanted you to bring people. It was horrific. So, what a terrible marketing idea. So I get there Friday night and I'm there. Okay. Half hour before show starts. And the host is a construction worker or something. The host is not there. Okay. And they're like, oh, we, we got to wait for the host. Is. Yeah. We got to wait for the host. She's on her way. She's on her way. And I'm like, what are we holding the show for someone who's, oh, I go, let's just do a two person show. Oh no, we got to do it. Tony Deo, I think, is the feature, who's great. This We talked about years ago. So the woman shows up. She's got a butterfly costume on, okay? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No large, pendulous breasts. No, but not a, tr- like, big, like, a, just distracting torpedo tits. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. And uh, she pulls a, a stool, sits on the stage. Starts doing a poem about cancer and how how it's you know uh, relating to her her sex life and her butterfly. None of it's funny. Not one single second is funny. It's very uncomfortable. Okay. Tony does his act. I do mine. She's loud in the crowd. She sits down. Her butterfly wings are blocking the stage. Oh no. I go, hey, could you take your wings off before we do the Did next you fly show? Fly somewhere. I go before the next show. Could you change out of your wings? Would that be possible? Could we could take this seriously? Like, um, she gets mad and leaves. I walked the MC. Everybody starts laughing and clapping, and I literally said on stage, "This is what happens when you pick up somebody else's shift at work." I'm like, this is, Hysterical. this is Gary Goldman is at Madison Square Garden opening for Louis C.K., who at the time is the hottest comedian in the country. And I'm here arguing with an MC with butterfly wings. I go, this is the thanks I get for doing a favor for a friend, right? You know, not for nothing. 
I, you know, I have a very, I don't know Gary very well. I've seen Gary and I, I've been around just a very little well, bit. He would have died. I would pay money. Gary would have died. Gary I called Gary. I got butterfly girl. But they fired me. That, that couple, line? that couple that night who I did them the favor, who showed up on a moment's notice to cover the show for them, fired me, wrote a letter to my agent saying that I was so mean that this woman was a cancer survivor and I made fun of cancer survivors. And I said, first of all, my mother's a cancer survivor. I got my own issues. We've all had these. I said, I'm not making fun of cancer. Why are we leading with the victimization of it? How about that it was a comedy show and she destroyed the room with her misery and her butterfly wings? It was the funniest thing. I called Gary and I go, I love you. But if you'd have had that, I think I would have had to come get you off the top of a roof. If that would have been, if you would have given up Louis C.K., to stay for that. Like, cause there was a question. Gary's such a, oh, a no. thoughtful person and the thought process. I'm like, you literally, I think I saved your life. I think I saved your life with that thing. So that's why I'm saying that those, those trolls that said that I, I, I was saying something. I never worked that club, even though they called me and asked me to come back and apologize. I never worked that club again until the new owners took it over. Yeah, good for you. Why would you over. ever go back? You know, I love the idea. We just did a show here for uh, 1330 where we had a bunch of folks um, who are cancer survivors. They beat cancer's ass and yeah. they, about, and they decided they wanted to do stand up about it. So they all wrote and sets and they took the time to learn how to do it. And they went out there and they wrote and prepared these sets. These people had never done comedy before and they were wonderful. It was an amazing yes. event. But when you're drawing a name out of the hat and the person survived cancer, they show up in a butterfly costume. You're not really setting anyone up for success. Well, and she apparently, the backstory is, is that she, I found it later, was having an allegedly, let me say that so I don't get sued again. Okay. Although I don't think they have Cosby's. Allegedly, there was something maybe going on with the guy okay. and that you know well, it's funny because i saw a video of this girl wearing the butterfly costume and she was doing patrice o'neill's act <laughs> i wish someone had video the stuff that i have been All through if there was video i would be huge bigger than i was when i was seven months pregnant i'm telling stage. you like so people don't realize the silliness that happens at comedy clubs sometimes like they see a show and they go okay yeah. there's a show but they don't realize just the amount of insanity that goes into be the performer who wants to go on that stage. And when they, you know, when you open up the stage, the people who aren't experienced to do it, things could go all kinds of wrong. Yeah. That girl who they threw the, the beer at and then went viral. I had a lady stand up, throw her entire glass with full wine on me. I look like Carrie from the, from Carrie, <laughs> right? Like I'm at prom. I'm, I have a group of people, guys who were uh, Marines that I had entertained at Ali Asalim uh, Marine Base. Okay. Or I, or that, I, I, Ali Asalim, I think, was the Marine Base. Okay. Like, or it could have been the Air Force Base. Forgive me, my brain. Kuwait. Let's just say Kuwait. Okay. okay? They come running at this lady. I have a group of women who were doing a bachelor party who love me running at this lady. They want to beat the hell out of her. I have to save her. She sits down and after does that goes, go on. Let me ask you this question. And then I destroyed her. Uh, and then the do, cops do you tried to arrest to me. Save her? Like at that point, I'm not saving anybody. Well, at that point, I'm like, oh, well, look what you just I yourself. wanted to verbally eviscerate her, which I did. I called her every name from and it, like everything. I ripped her apart upside down and sideways. The police came. They tried, they were had her zip locked in the back or zip tied zip lock. They put her in a baggie. Um, she stayed they, fresh they, for 30 days. They had her uh, zip tied in the back of a cop car. And then a sergeant came and let her go. And then they tried to tell me I was inciting a riot that I should expect that at my job. All this stuff, Jacksonville, Florida. I don't, ex I don't expect. No, that. I said it never happened in all these years. Well, anyway, long story short is that I went and wrote a little blog about it. It got picked up and Finally, once the heat, they went to try to arrest her. And uh, 
It turns out she was a confidential informant. That's why they don't want to arrest her. But she's they, a confidential informant who showed up and throwing stuff. That's why she had that. But that's why she had. She thought she had immunity to everything, right? Like she thought she had immunity to everything. All right, listen. My life. That's listen. why crime, man. Crime and comedy. To the RPD, if you're listening, I'm willing to talk for. You know, if I get one of those free passes, I can just throw stuff at people. Dude. I'm willing to talk. Dude, you don't. That's yeah. I can always tell. I can now. It's different, but you could always tell the people who were entitled back then. It had nothing to do with race, color, or creed, or religion. You could tell who was entitled by like who didn't get in trouble because they were connected to someone. Now everybody's connected. Everybody's got a phone. People can't sweep things aside. But I mean, when I grew up. Cops would drive some people home with DUIs. Right. You know what I mean? They would just say, hey, listen, I'll follow you to your house. Don't do anything. Too yeah, stupid. you yeah. know, I now mean, forget it. $10,000 fine, cars impounded. Well, a couple of things I've learned and a couple of things I know. I've learned tonight. I had no idea you got canceled over that stuff. That's terrible. Completely destroyed, that. obliterated. But here's what I already knew. I already knew that Tammy's seen it all. I already know the Tammy's too much toured all over the country has been for years. It is just a pro on stage. And this is going to be a phenomenal weekend here at comedy at the Carlson. Cindy arena is performing with you. I yeah, love she's Cindy. so funny. Cindy's Bruno. on the Cindy's. Yeah, she's great. She's right been now. telling me all the stuff that she's been offered. It was awesome. Yeah. I think the best part about all of that, all of those things, all of the canceling, all of the time I got fired, all this stuff is that who I am on stage is truly me. My my perspective, you if you my jokes are, I'm not the greatest of all time. I'm not saying that, but they're my jokes. I'm the best I've ever been. They're all from my real life and I'm no longer afraid. You want to leave? Leave. Just go quietly. You don't want to like me? Don't like me. Go laugh though. You need somebody that makes you laugh. Yeah. You know, I'm doing the best I can to bring for my entire adult life. I've dedicated it to making people laugh, right? This is, I can't build the house, but I can pack a house. So let's just laugh. All right. Well, let's laugh this weekend. Tickets are on sale for the shows that start tonight yes. at 7 30 PM. There's a 7 30 and a 9 30, I believe uh, tonight and tomorrow night, you get your tickets at carlsoncomedy.com. And Tammy, where can everybody follow you? Where can we, where can we get more Tammy? Uh, all, all the socials, Instagram, uh, TikTok. I, I don't really do TikTok too much though, because I'm kind of not for censorship, yeah. but I kind of hope that the government cancels it just to it's, equal the playing field a little bit. TikTok is psychotic <laughs> and <laughs> I'm so anti TikTok. I'm anti TikTok. I'm anti AI. I'm against both Facebook. of those things. Oh my God. Don't do AI. I wrote into AI, uh, show a picture of Tammy Pescatelli getting a walk of fame star. Mm -hmm. First of all, I look like me every, <laughs> I look like all the Jersey housewives morphed into one. Right. Like okay. it so looks it crazy. It. No, it's scary. Even AI can't picture me getting a star on the walk of me. It's artificial intelligence. It's not God. Um, the, uh, the funny thing to me is with AI, uh, you can tell it anything and it has no idea what, like it, it just knows how to BS. Like it's just a BS machine. Have you seen the Google one that they have? They've released it. I have like a, um, what do you call it? Uh, early access to it. And I am like freaked out. That's funny. I haven't. I I'm gonna start. I, I think I might even do this on stage. But uh, I I realized that I'm gonna start calling my husband AI because that's what he has. Artificial intelligence. Hysterical. He has just he bits and pieces from every internet podcast that he watches or listens to. So it's artificial intel. He sounds intelligent, but he doesn't know why he's intelligent. You know, I just got a message here from an attorney and, and they say that that me. joke is already somebody else's property. Now. I need to double check. You just it. did that. We should Google it. Somebody just did it on their next special. Yes. Already. Yeah. I just am writing, writing it. I haven't said it on stage. We need to Google to see if anybody else has said it and nobody else better take it from me. AI comedians. Think it could happen. You think AI could replace comics? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. They're doing it already mm -hmm. because people are, there's a woman right now on TikTok. That did one of my jokes. You know how they voice over your joke? Yeah. She's got 15.8 million views on it. On your joke? 
I thought, oh, this is such a great joke. 15.8 million people like it. I put it up. I don't even think I got 1,500 views on it. Oh. So, yeah, we're replaceable for sure. Not the jokes because the jokes they're always going to need. Yeah. But who we we're are for touch. sure. Yeah. But, uh, folks, this weekend, Tammy Pascatelli, we'll see you at the show. Uh, can we get those plugs? Where are we going to, where can we follow you on the social, Tammy? Tammy Pescatelli at Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Twitter. I think I have blue check marks, but I don't pay for them. So mm. don't fight with me. I don't all know. Right, or maybe I right. can. Who knows? Maybe they're taking everything out of my account. There's always that one little weird thing. If you don't watch, it's $5.99. It's Dr. Nivea. Do you ever see that? Nope. I didn't know what that was. Hmm. Right? Dr. Nivea. I tracked it down. It's And it's like... Literally, I was paying for some streaming service that I once clicked on for sports. Then it's like, yeah, that you know, there's always that one little five ninety nine thing on your credit card that you don't realize. I'm getting charged for uh, following you on Twitter now, Tammy Pascatelli. Oh, you are? No. Oh. (laughs) You know, you can do that now. You could have people subscribe to your Twitter and pay you. I know that. And I saw that. And I'm like, why would I do that? God bless anybody who does it. Again, this is someone who started a podcast 15 years after everybody else. I just don't feel like I can. I grew up in a neighborhood. We never had a yard sale, a garage sale, because I thought, who wants to buy this crap? I'll just put it out on the stupid if you want it, take it. Well, you know what I'm going to do in 2038? I'm going to pay to follow you on Twitter. When you oh. right. We'll see you guys next week. And don't forget to get your tickets, carlsoncomedy.com. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you at the show. Oh, hit the wrong. Thank you for being awesome and watching another episode of the Carlson Cast. Don't forget we're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube every Friday morning. You could also follow us on social media on Twitter and Instagram at Carlson Cast. You can listen anytime on iTunes, Google Play, and we're now available on Spotify. You should also check out our main